Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I'm going to be doing a full face of a brand that I've been curious about for years. Sephora Collection. I finally bit the bullet and bought so many things from their line and I'm gonna try it out on camera for you guys. Before we get into it, I want to thank Karma for sponsoring today's portion of the video. Karma is an app and a Chrome extension that ensures you never miss a price drop or a coupon code. You can check the link down below if this sounds like something you would be interested in. Karma used to be called Shop Tagger. They're always expanding their capabilities and this new name represents the good karma that you will get by helping you shop smart. In relation to today's video, Sephora always has the Sephora collection products on sale, normally with a coupon code. When I checked out, Karma instantly put that coupon code in for me and I saved 20% off my purchase. One of my favorite features we'll talk about in a couple seconds. It's easy and completely free to use. On your computer, you are going to download the Chrome extension and you're gonna visit any of your favorite stores as per usual for me you know that's gonna be Sephora, Ulta, Beautylish, all of those good places and when you find an item that you really like but you don't want to pull the trigger on yet you can save that item by clicking the button over to the side over here and it's gonna give you different options to be notified when a certain color comes back in stock or when it goes on sale. You can get notifications via email or mobile push when you save an item when it goes on sale, when a relevant coupon code comes up, or when the item comes back in stock which is why I love it. Like I said earlier, you can organize it into lists, almost like folders. So for me, I have my lists in makeup for you guys that I'm looking to come back into stock, makeup that I've saved that I'm looking to go on sale, and then also of course my personal purchases like clothes and other makeup that I am watching out for. These multiple wish lists are going to be great because they can help you shop more mindfully and intelligently, especially if you're trying to save money during these times. And my favorite part about Karma is that it scans the web for coupon codes before you check out automatically, and then it will apply them at checkout. This is a special feature if you use Karma on your desktop so make sure you do have the Google Chrome extension. You can also earn cash via PayPal when you shop at select retailers. So if this sounds like something that you are interested in, you can get Karma by clicking the link down below in the description box or typing this link in right up there. It's easy to do, it's free, it saves you money. So if you want to download it, make sure you do that. Again, thank you to Karma for sponsoring this video. Let's get into the good stuff. Now if you aren't familiar with Sephora Collection, they are Sephora's house brand. And their claim to fame is that you get Sephora level quality, you know, high end makeup quality at a more affordable price. So what I'm seeing by kind of looking at my table here where I have all the stuff, all the good stuff, seems that hopefully the quality on the inside is nice because the quality on the outside packaging, it's not the nicest, but you know what? I'm okay. If it keeps the price down, we... We love to see it. I'll be honest, I bought this a few months ago and it has been a while since I've had enough time to just sit down and do a video like this. Just one that's not about new products, just stuff that I wanted to test out. I have to say so far, besides the packaging feeling pretty cheap, I was looking at where each product was made and I'm really surprised they sourced from all the right places, at least all of the places that I enjoy those particular products being made. So I'm really excited to see how this goes on my face. So I'm going to take you in a little bit closer. It is literally a bajillion degrees outside today. I'm not exaggerating. It's a bajillion degrees. I am sweating. My hair is so poofy. There really was no saving it. So today's just not going to be a good hair day. So the first product that I picked up and I just picked out random ones. I also asked you guys a while back what Sephora collection products you liked. So I took from what you said as well to pick out these products because they have a lot. Like it was a bit overwhelming. I really didn't know what to get. So I took a guess and I picked out the Beauty Amplifier Hydration Face Primer. This is $16. So you'll notice I would say these are on the higher end range of drugstore prices for the most part. You know, they're not quite a high end price, but they're not quite a drugstore price. They're sitting right in the middle between those two. So this is interesting. I did fill my swatches for these. I haven't actually put them on my face, but look at this. This is like a weird bluish color. I thought it was going to be minty. It's not. It smells a little bit minty, but anyways. So this is a hydrating base. Let's see. Made in Italy. I'm just saying. The places that these were sourced from, I'm so surprised by. And this, this feels nice. It feels like a nice hydrating base. My face doesn't feel too sticky. I'm like smacking myself in the face. I like this. 
I think. I need to use it more. But I think I like that. $16? Okay. This is a thumbs up so far. Foundation. I was not too sure about foundation. I've seen a lot of Sephora brand foundations throughout the years. I recently tried out, I have my iPad in front of me to kind of use as a guide, the Best Skin Ever Liquid Foundation from Sephora Collection. I did not like it. It was not for me. So for this video, I wanted to try out a new one. So I picked out the 10 Hour Wear Perfection Foundation. This is $20. It's in a nice glass bottle. This is made in France. So I'm gonna shake it up. I picked out the shade medium beige. No, beige? 25, medium. It has a lot of different names on there. I'm not sure what one I picked out. I'll put it in the description box. This looks like it'd be a good shade. It's a little bit thicker. It's not like a runny consistency. This is an older foundation. I know it's been around for a while. Uh, that newer foundation I did not like. Maybe a bit too deep on me, but that's fine. Oh, we'll be fine. Just gonna put a little bit on my cheek. This is giving me like a light medium coverage. You can see it's not covering too much. And if you're new here, this is my favorite way to apply foundations. I just feel like you don't waste product this way. It gives the most even coverage. Doesn't soak into the sponge quite as much. You should try it out if you haven't. So just ignore the fact that this is not really my color. It's not bad though. When I come back next week from Florida, it'll be my perfect color. So I'm liking the way that this feels and I don't know if you can see, but it is giving me a little bit of a do. Now I will say I tend to think products give me a glowiness, but it's only because I'm literally sitting in front of a billion studio lights. So of course it's creating a glare. So I will have to see without my studio lights how this makes me look. I need to get a close up because I thought it looked good from afar, but now that I'm close up, it doesn't look as good. It looks healthy on the skin. I look glowy. I look moisturized. The coverage looks a little bit uneven, so I'm gonna put some more in the center of my face. It doesn't look bad. It doesn't look fantastic, but it also doesn't look bad. I think I need a little bit more attention in these areas. Listen, if we can get some really good quality products from this video, that would be spectacular since the price is right. So I feel like it's not building up coverage, which is fine if you don't need the coverage. And I'm looking pretty dewy. So it's definitely gonna stop at a medium coverage really. And if you have a lot of discoloration or anything like that, it's gonna need some help from concealer, but it looks okay. Like I look really dewy. So this is definitely for if you're looking for a dewy look, which is interesting because this is a long wear foundation, but we shall see. Looks good. Okay, let's move on to eyebrows. I know this is a weird order, but this is just the way that I do my makeup. I picked up the retractable brow pencil that is supposed to be waterproof in the shade medium brown. It looks like every other eyebrow product on the market. It has a pretty small tip just like that nothing really crazy to mention so I'm just gonna pop it on let's see it's not super pigmented which I like because it's not gonna make me look like I have block brows it's a bit more forgiving you know but it also is not extremely precise I don't know I feel like it doesn't look super hair like when I'm applying it to the skin like the Huda Beauty bomb brows is the best for creating hair like strokes. This one's not that good. It just seems like a blob as opposed to a line. This is good. I mean, it's a brow pencil. I don't really have much to say about it. There isn't anything that I dislike about it. I do think, you know, my normal ABH Benefit brow pencils are better. I do prefer the way that those draw on, but hey, this is cheaper and it got the job done. So I don't have anything to complain about. So this is where things are gonna get a little bit off. I picked out the Bright Future Gel Serum Concealer concealer. It sounded wonderful. It sounded hydrating. There were lots of shades. I didn't know what to do. So it's going to be $14. I picked up the shade Buttercream. It was described as a light with neutral undertones. This ain't light. This is like white. I don't think that this is going to match me. By the way, I forgot to mention made in Germany. Best brow pencils are made in Germany and this is made in Germany. And this guy is made in the USA. So what I'm going to do, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm trying to get away with using this concealer that I fear is way too light for me. I'm gonna put a little bit of the leftover foundation on my sponge on my under eyes just to cover a little bit. We're gonna use this more as a highlighter. This is not a light with neutral undertones. It's not. Okay, let's see. If it doesn't have a lot of coverage, won't be a problem. She's very brightening. Looks really hydrating on the under eyes though, but I think 
going back, I'd get the medium with neutral undertones, which is the shade Custard, because this is a bit lighter than I would prefer. So if this ever happens to you, you get a crazy light concealer, do what I'm doing right now. Try and make it look a little bit more intentional by highlighting the face. Be careful when you put it down the nose because it can make your nose look a little bit wide, which is what I just did, but whatever. It's fine. Okay, so taking a closer look though, it looks really hydrating. You're not gonna get too much coverage from it though, so don't go to this if you want some coverage because taking a look, they do have some concealers that do put, claim to give you more coverage. This isn't one of them. This looks like it'd be nice with the skin tint or tinted moisturizer. With the exception of my dum-dum on my part with that shade match, it looks pretty good. I like it. Okay, so this was the product that I was the most excited about because this is the one product that so many of you guys recommended to me. So I knew I had to get it. This is the Micro Smooth Baked Powder Foundation. It's $20 and it, so many of you guys said it was amazing. So I'm going to take your word for it. I got it in the shade light and see this light actually looks like a light. I mean, you can see the difference between their two versions of light here. This is made in Italy where the best powders are made. So let's see, I'm gonna put it under one eye first. This is a refer number 19 bar. Oh yeah. She's smoothing. She is very, very smoothing. Let me take a look at the difference between the two sides. That really smoothed my face. It reminds me a lot of the new Jaclyn Cosmetics powders that came out. I don't know if you can see, there's a weird bit of texture here, but that's been happening recently. So it's leading me to believe it's a me problem, not a product problem. Ooh, I like this. Now it says it's a powder foundation. I don't know what it would look like with the coverage built up, but as far as the setting powder, it is very, very smoothing, really pretty. I like what I'm seeing. This looks really nice. So you guys led me in the right direction. This is my favorite product that I've tried so far. I did manage to buy the most expensive thing that the brand carries because I'm me and I couldn't help it. But this looked beautiful. This is the Sephora Pro. So I guess it's a different collection and I'm sure the products are gonna be a little bit more expensive, but it's the face palette. It's ginormous. You can compare it to my head. This is $58. So easily the most expensive thing that Sephora collection offers, but look how beautiful it looks. And when I was swatching these, you can definitely use these as eyeshadows, especially the Showtime shade that's glittery right here. Use them as eyeshadows, but this is like a full on cheek palette. It has bronzer, blush, and highlight. I'm not gonna dig into all of the shades today just because I have some individual blushes to play with, but it reminded me a lot of the Morphe blush palette, just packaging wise, but this Sephora definitely feels a lot higher quality with the packaging. This is made in Canada, so a lot of great face powder products are made in Canada. I know the Wayne Goss is made in Canada if you need an example. We're gonna start off for now by just using the bronzers in here. And then I wanna use the individual blushes and we might come back into here. So I'm gonna start off with Art Deco. This is a cooler shade. So we're gonna use this to contour. I don't know why I decided to go in with the largest brush ever for something that normally should be used precisely, but whatever. So I like that this does have something to sculpt with. Okay, let me use this right. Also, this foundation did not dry down and it's very sticky. So I'm gonna go in with the powder again just to kind of set everything. I will say packaging of Sephora collection is not their strong suit because everything feels like it's gonna break. Okay, I'm gonna use a Morphe Y9 to sculpt. It's gonna use a little bit because you can see it's, it's quite ashy. It's a contour shade, that's how it should look. I really don't use contour shades too often. I just don't feel the need to. Hmm, that was nice, I added a nice sculpt along the jawline. I really liked that there. Okay, I just wanna use a little bit and then we're gonna go into Muse, which is the bronzer. So I would say two contour shades, two true highlights, two blushes, and I don't really know, three blushes, one, two, three, and then I guess that's a blush, I don't know. That looks like an eyeshadow to me. <laughs> So I'm going in with this Muse bronzer and it's not showing up too much on my face. Like it's slightly showing. It's blending pretty nicely. Okay, we're gonna put this palette to the side. So far, I don't know if it's worth the $58. I haven't had a problem with it, but the wells are so big. 
I wish the wells were smaller for a smaller price because $58 is a lot. We might come back to that, but first I bought two individual cheek products that I want to cover. So I got their So Shy Blush. This is just an individual packaging. It's pretty affordable, $10 to $14. This felt super creamy when I was using it. So this is made in France. It feels really nice. So I'm going to put this on... I'm gonna drop it first, I guess. I'm gonna put this on this cheek using a Flower Beauty brush. And it's not too pigmented, which I really like. Actually, maybe it could use a little bit more pigmentation. Oh, that's pretty. This is a nice soft shade. It's blending out just fine. It's kind of nondescript. Like, I don't think anything about it is amazing, but it's working. You can, can you even see that on camera? It's, it's there in person if you can't see it. So this is okay. I mean, the packaging is like horrible and it's scratching off. <laughs> <laughs> but the product itself inside is nice. I also got this product, which I was very, very curious about. I'm looking to see if I can find the price. Yeah, so these are called the Golden Hour Luminizing Powders. They're a little bit more pricey, $17, made in Italy. And this looks like it would be more so like a blush lighter or a highlighter. I'm not really sure that's what I wanted to kind of find out. So I'm gonna use my highlight brush because it looked like a blush in the pan. And then when I swatched it, it looked like a highlight. So I feel like this could be a good bridge between the two, but now that I'm looking at it, it's definitely just a highlight. It blends in seamlessly with the blush. Definitely just a highlight. Mm, it's emphasizing my texture a little bit more than I would like. I don't think this is worth the $17 probably. Like it's pretty, but I don't think it's worth it. I got it in the shade Dusk. It's okay. I'm gonna put a little bit more blush on. I just want to blend those two together a little bit more. Okay, I'm gonna go back into the face palette because I do wanna play with a couple more colors in here. Go in with Glambitious. This looks like a really great shade if you have a more fair skin tone but it's still showing up on me. It's pretty. I wanna mix in some of really pretty, which is a bit brighter, but I feel like it's a great accent color. Great to build. I like the quality of this better, I think, than the individual blushes. Seems to be a little bit more visible on the cheek, a little bit more blurring as well. Then let's move on to the highlight. We'll do paparazzi. This one has some glitter to that. I guess I can kind of see it now that I'm looking. I don't like that one. That one is too glittery. Let me try Hollywood. That's really what made me blend it out. Okay, neither of the highlighters that I tried are amazing. I would say I like the way the Golden Hour powder looks than the highlight in the palette itself, but none are like knocking my socks off. So I don't necessarily know that this is worth $58. It is quite pricey. It's fun. The powders are good. It is expensive. I think I'd rather get like a Natasha Denona palette, but that's just me. That's my two cents in case you cared. All right, we are gonna move on to the eyes now. And I wasn't too sure about which eyeshadow palette I wanted to buy. There weren't that many. I always remembered there being a lot of eyeshadow palettes and I swear I didn't see them. So I think I saw Lisa J. She really liked these I Love palettes. So I picked one up. These are made in China and I will be honest, I was a little bit skeptical about them. I am an eyeshadow snob, I know it. But when I swatched these, they felt very, very creamy. So the price of these, let me double check, are $14, which is really great. You get seven shades, there's lots of different tones. There's a light cool palette, there's a medium warm, light warm, medium cool, deep cool, deep warm. I love that. Which one is this one? I got the medium cool and these look like really pretty colors. So I'm going to put just a touch of foundation on my eyelids, clean everything up. I'm gonna start off with this nice big base shade that I really love that they put in here. And I am popping this all over the lid just as a base shade. This is really nice. I like that they included this. So versatile and underrated kind of color that not enough brands put in these palettes in my opinion, because it's just useful. We're gonna start off these two Two shades look very similar to me. That blended out beautifully. It applied beautifully as well. And again, these brushes look dirty. I swear they're not. We're gonna get into this shade right here. Does it add more depth? Mm. These shades are very similar. I don't think it was necessary to put both of them, but they both blend out beautifully. Put a little bit along my lower lash line. I'm doing a not very unique look, BT dubs, since I'm just testing the formulas. And then we're gonna go into the deepest shade. This is gonna be the moment of truth. Hey, 
This is nice, really pigmented, working itself out really easily. You know, if you are going to be in Sephora, you want a new eyeshadow palette, something small, something not too expensive. So far, I'm liking this. I'm really surprised. I was not expecting to like this. I'm gonna put just a touch of that down here for some depth. Okay, let's go in to the shimmers now. I want to use this shade all over the lid. Just looks like a nice kind of bronzy shimmer shade. They're nice. They're like not super blingy. They're a little bit more on the subtle side. They have a nice creaminess to them. They can be built up or they can be applied pretty sheer. I would say I like the mattes better than I like the shimmers in here, but I can't knock it. They work just fine. I'm gonna go into this bronzy shade and put this in the inner half of the lid. The coverage is pretty nice. And let's make sure everything is fused. And then we're gonna go into this shade. I used every single shade in this palette. You don't need to. Just wanted to get a feel for it. I honestly probably wouldn't if I was doing this not on camera. Listen, y'all, this is pretty nice. For $14, I really don't have anything bad to say. Is it mind-blowingly amazing? No, but it certainly got the job done. So this is a thumbs up. You're looking for something a little bit more affordable. This is great to travel with because it's really small and it's not super expensive. So if it breaks, your heart won't be broken, you know? So I like this. I recommend that. For eyeliner, I picked out the Colorful Wink Felt Liner. It's supposed to be waterproof. I love a good liquid liner. I feel like I'm always looking for the next big thing when it comes to liquid liners. So it is a felt tip. Looks like this. It looks nice and long. I feel like I'm gonna like this. Let's see. This is $14. I don't recommend it. I know my line is thick and horrible. I don't know what I'm doing today. It's not black enough for me. There are better eyeliners at the drugstore. I don't recommend this one. I'm gonna do this other one off camera because I am struggling right now, uh, but not a fan of this one. Nope. Okay, yeah, so this is the first product in today's video where I am immediately like, nope, it looks not black enough. You can see the eyeshadow underneath peeking through. Not a win for me. Let's move on to mascara. I picked up the Size Up Extra Volume Mascara. I'm not one to judge mascaras because I don't have the best lashes to begin with, but I figured I'd pop one in. This is $12. It has a nice big fat spoolie. Let me see if it does anything to these lashes. Hey, you know, this mascara made something of my lashes. It did start to get a little bit spidery because I kept trying to build, so maybe don't build it too much, but like this side looks really good. This is a decent mascara. I like it. That's a lot for me to say about a mascara, so I like that. I did get some false lashes, a couple of different styles to play with. We have swanky and we have feisty. I think for today, I'm gonna pop swanky on. I'm gonna do this off camera because it's gonna take me like 20 minutes, so I'll be back. Okay, lashes are on. I have to say, not too keen on the lashes. The band was hard to manipulate. I just feel like, you know, an Ardell is so thin, it molds to the eye really easily. I struggled to get this one to mold to the eye. The lashes themselves are pretty, they're natural. They're not my favorite, but the band was an issue for me, so I don't really recommend the lashes. I don't know, maybe Feisty will be better, but at least Swanky, I'm not a fan of that. Lip liners. So these are good. I use these in my makeup kit. I actually got three new colors to put in my makeup kit. These are $13 and I picked up three shades. We have a light pink in Midday Rosé. We have Creme de la Creme. This is one of my favorites for brides. And then we have Nothing But Nude. These look absolutely beautiful. We're gonna do Nothing But Nude today. I haven't tried this color yet. These are really creamy. They aren't necessarily like long lasting, but you can put these all over the lips as lipstick. I love the color range that they have. You can see that? So pretty, so hydrating. That's a really pretty color. I recommend that one. I also picked up a liquid lipstick. Some of you told me that their liquid lipsticks were good. I picked it up in the shade 71. This is made in Italy, but look, my packaging came broken. I can still get the color off, but my fingers get all gluey. I don't know. I'm just gonna put a touch of this on. Really beautiful color. It has a slight vanilla scent, made in Italy. Honestly though, this feels really nice and lightweight. I think I like this. I'm gonna wait for it to dry down a bit, but the last lip product that I have, I didn't spend too much time on lip products, uh, but this is the Outrageous Plumping Lip Gloss. I was very intrigued by this. I loved the packaging. It's $12. Let's see. I got the shade 01 Clear. 
Made in Luxembourg. Interesting. So while that kind of settles on the lips, mm, it's starting to get minty. I can feel it. We're going to finish off with the set spray, set and refresh spray. Decent mist. It can be a little bit hard if you put it too close to your face, but a little bit far away. Nice. It feels refreshing, but it has like a slight alcohol -y scent that I don't like. Here is an up close of the makeup. Okay, so I would say taking a step back, looking at my skin, the foundation does look a bit heavy. I prefer something that looks a little bit more skin-like, so I don't think I'm that in love with the foundation. Again, we will see how it wears, but I'm not really loving how it's sitting on the skin as much. But let's just talk about the products as a whole, what I really liked, what I think is worth it, and what was a miss for me. So starting off with what was really great. I enjoyed the hydrating face primer. I think this is really nice. I'm just really into hydrating face primers in general. It doesn't take a lot to impress me, but I think that this one was really nice. Probably one of my favorite products in this video, all thanks to your recommendation, was the Micro Smoothing Foundation Powder. This is really beautiful. It has a lot of similar elements to like the Charlotte Tilbury and the Kosas. It's like a hybrid between those two. Very smoothing to the skin. It, I think it can look, if you put too much on, a little bit heavy, a little bit powdery. So if you're into traceless powders, I don't think you would like this, but if you're into smoothing powders, setting powders, I think you will like this one a lot. This is the biggest surprise of the video. I really enjoyed this I Love palette. I love the colors that they have to offer. The mattes blended beautifully. The shimmers are really great. Like I said, this is perfect for travel. If you don't want to spend an arm and a leg at Sephora, these are very nice quality eyeshadows with beautiful everyday colors. Really impressed. I think all of the lip products are super nice as well. The lip liners I've used for years, Definitely recommend these. The liquid lipstick, or it's called a cream lip stain. It felt really nice, very thin. They have endless amounts of colors. The gloss is a bit sticky. I don't know if I'd put this in the gray category, so we're gonna leave it with the liquid lipsticks, the lip liner, the eyeshadow, the powder, and the base are my favorite parts. Now, what I think you need to run from far away definitely is this eyeliner. It's not good. The lashes are not good either. Everything else was kind of in the middle. I do think the Sephora Pro Palette, which was the item that I was most excited about, it's a bit expensive. I really wouldn't recommend it. You can get better things at this price. And then, you know, these are okay. The mascara seemed okay. The lip gloss is pretty good. Can't speak on the concealer yet because it was the complete wrong color. I'm not too sure about the foundation and the eyebrows. It's just okay. So there we go. That was my brand overview of Sephora collection. Overall, I don't think everything is amazing and worth it, but there definitely are some gems that I'm very happy I could find by doing this video for you. Hey guys, so I just wanted to give you a quick wear time update. So I haven't been wearing the makeup for too long. Like this isn't like a 10 hour wear test by any means, but I've been wearing the products for almost six hours now. And before I took it off, I wanted to give you an update. The longevity of the lip products was amazing. I ate sushi and they still stayed on. Now, I don't know if it was the liquid lipstick, the lip liner, or the lip gloss, but the combo of all three was really long lasting. I mean, it's six hours. It's not on anymore, but I was impressed by that. The foundation, it looks better. You know, I wasn't too sure with that application, but now that it's settled into the skin, it looks much better and it's held up well. It hasn't wore down. The only thing is it doesn't give like a skin-like finish. It looks a little bit heavy on the skin, so if you don't like that look, then don't go for it but it's wearing well, so it looks good. The eyeshadow has faded a little bit, so it's not going to be the most long wearing, so just make sure you manage that by putting down a good eye primer and you should be good to go. I didn't, I just used this foundation, and yeah, my eyeshadow is definitely fading. It's still there, but it doesn't look as good. The eyeliner and the lashes are struggling. That's the part that did not wear very well because the eyelashes have popped off because they can't mold to my eyelid because that band is too thick, and the eyeliner just looked terrible from the jump but I mean overall like my skin looks good the makeup looks good you can tell I've worn it for a few hours but it doesn't look bad the mascara hasn't flaked the eyebrows look intact so overall I mean with the exception of a couple products everything has worn very well
If there are any Sephora products that I'm missing out on that I need to try, comment down below. Again, thank you to Karma for sponsoring today's video. If you are interested in downloading Karma, that link is right there in the description box. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.